Once again, <clears throat> I gotta clear my throat. I don't have a Wi Fi signal. And I don't have a telephone signal. So my buddy can't call me when he's got scrap. Back to the old fashioned hunt and peck. How do you guys like that video I did about McDonald's? <laughs> oh boy, my kid left a book bag in here and her lunch bag. It's really windy out. Prize possession. and this is all I find. Because it's that competitive. So it really is. It's that competitive. And another uh, YouTube commenter go, I guess they have a Dodge Caravan. And they're worried they put too much weight in there. 800 pounds. <coughs> and that's what the seat's out. I'm like, no. It's 1,200 pounds. 1,100 pounds you can get into a Grand Caravan with, with the seats in it. I'm like, look at this thing right here and it tells you how much weight the car can hold. I'm looking at there where the where the weight thing is right there front here how much weight <coughs> not a lot of cars have the tire loading capacity they can hold quite a bit your standard car tire can hold about 1800 pounds safely and that's each tire so just like overloading an elevator is pretty much impossible because they're sized they're sized smaller than you could get 
enough humans in there to overload it. I mean, if you pack it in there with like 12 people, you can come close to the rating of the maximum carrying capacity. And I guess you could screw it up if everybody decides to like bounce up and down. It'll make the elevator cabling lock up and the elevator will get stuck. But overloading an elevator is pretty much impossible unless you put car batteries in there or something. Well, <clears throat> overloading a, a car or a minivan is pretty much impossible unless you fill it with like really heavy dense material such as you know sandbags or um, small chunks of cast iron all broken into pieces and yeah heavy dense material yeah but scrap metal or or people you're not going to overload the the minivan there's there's just no chance of it the material is not heavy and dense enough for that to happen <clears throat> look at that big backyard somebody's got the task of cutting that <laughs> jeez this guy right here never has scrap. I can point out the houses that never have scrap. The one guy that saves the scrap in the shopping cart, I want to go over by there, but I forgot to return his bin. And he's a little bit mad at me for not doing so. Because <clears throat> he puts the bin in the shopping cart so the little itty bits don't get all over his driveway. I took the bin because he told me I could take the bin. I'm like, uh, I want to take the bin, but I don't want to take the bin. I took the bin and I never returned it. Um, okay, this ironing board that's right here has been leaning against a tree for probably about two weeks. I wasn't sure if I could take it or not, but apparently so. Oh, there's an oxygen bottle. I'm not sure if I should even bother with that. The one scrapyard used to take them until somebody probably advised them not to. This thing has been leaning against a tree for weeks. Weeks and weeks. A long time. Why am I moving slow? I just took, I'll probably be tripping over that. I'll probably be tripping over that for the next like nine months. That oxygen tank. Now I have to get back home because my wife texted me on uh, Facebook Messenger that. My kids were fist fighting each other in the car on the way to dance practice. Oh boy. Look how green the grass is. 
You're never going to hear that from the scrap and pallet man now, are you? <laughs> Those kids beating the crap out of each other. <laughs> uh, well, you will hear her here. I mean, the little guy, Nora, was like landing punches on on my older daughter, Eileen. I mean, land, like landing blows. <clears throat> Nora's pretty tough. She's, she's almost bully strong. And <clears throat> you have to be, when you're in her kind of world, where you have selective mutism, which is a form of autism, or Asperger's. If you don't know what it is, look it up, because I have it and my three kids have it to some varying degree. What the heck is that thing? This is a lips. Oh, they're fans. I take that. You guys probably wondering what the hell. Why does this guy got a camera? Can I take your stuff? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Still staring. Why would you cut the handle off the off the snow shovels? I'm a horrible whore. I'll, I'll take him. I'll take him with the wooden handle. I don't care. <clears throat> yeah, I put the seatbelt on because I've been driving full Tucker Upper style without the seatbelt on for the last mile and a half. A while holding onto the camera. And facing the opposite way in traffic with no power steering to get out of the way of this Jeep. <laughs> you on to the next, wherever that might be, if there is any more. Man, I wonder what I'm missing out on today. There's some more good stuff.
that's a 65 I think my daughter my daughter wants a 67 so she could be like that one TV show what the heck is it <coughs> it escapes me what the heck is that TV show Like they're two guys. I don't know. They go around looking to like slay vampires or something. I don't know. I mean, I, I know the show. Tip of the tongue. I can't remember it though. The name. Well, I'm driving a minivan. How am I gonna get this in there? This is a complicated issue. Sometimes this door opens and sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, I didn't notice that pile of copper stove. Until I pulled the camera out. Look at that copper. Oh. And look at this thing. Oh. Uh oh, somebody forgot to charge his battery. Hmm. <clears throat> well, 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 well. Can't just leave that there, that's a lot of iron. Hmm. <clears throat> that's a commercial grade, that's a commercial grade setup there. Yep, quite the mess. <clears throat> more gear. What I what I really need more gear. <clears throat> what I really need is a. Well, see, the thing is, is if I back up. Somebody's probably going to need to leave the driveway after I get myself all set up. Somebody forgot to charge the battery. So I'm going to try plugging in. Pop the hood. This might be time to uh, ditch the minivan and go get the pickup truck. Actually. That's what I'm claiming. Because this little adventure is taking too long.
Okay, I have it plugged into an inverter. This Harbor Freight tool is falling apart. bend the blue That's a slow boat to China. What are you going to do with it? Well, finding this piece of steel I think wasn't worth it. <clears throat> um, now I'm really mad. That figures. Look what happened. <clears throat> this really cool tool. The end cracked right there. It just it just broke right off. <clears throat> While cutting this uh I don't know, it's about that thick. What is it, an eighth of an inch or something? That's the end of that tool. <clears throat> it just figures because you know what? It was it was too convenient for me. Looks like that piece comes off though, but whatever. And it never spent a day outside. Never spend a moment in a water bucket. <clears throat> Doesn't matter. I've lived life long enough to, to know that for me it doesn't matter how you treat the tool. 
But then again, that's just me. This doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. That's why I do things the way I do. Because I know <coughs> it's just going to, uh, in my ownership and in my possession, in my hands, it's just a matter of time before take some crap. So, that Bible passage, which pisses me off, but so true, about being thrown out of the Garden of Eden, and God said, work to the sweat of your brow. So for me, it's always the really hard way to do something because <clears throat> things that are really convenient are too good to be true. They always are. They always are. So when people go, why do you do it that way? Because <clears throat> that's the that's the last way of standing for me. That's usually all that's left. All that's left for me. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. tears. No. Poof. I'm just showing. All that's left is the hard way to do something. And the hard way to do something is usually the way that lasts forever. It seems to withstand the test of time. The really hard way. Like, people will wear my patience thin by going, why do you do it that way? Why? You should do it this way, because this way, where, yes, for you it does. But for me, I've been bestowed that Bible passage, work to the sweat of your brow. Man, nothing pisses me off more from the time I was probably five years old and first read that Bible passage. I remember being so angry, like angry at God, you know, and kind of angry at the world, really. Work to the sweat of your brow. There is no utopia. That's why I, 
you know, like these leftists and stuff, they're always trying to create like this wonderful socialist or communist state where everything will be fine and every, the, the spoils will all be equal. And yeah, <clears throat> and that always ends up in a pile of skulls. Pretty much how it works. Oh, don't cry about it, Kingdom. You can get that part. Okay, that part is not. Nah, that's that's not going to happen. Why? I don't see myself sitting down at the computer and typing away at this non-existent computer, by the way typing away and I'm like looking and scrolling and squinting in my eyes nah, nah it's just easier to plug in that inverter box that I found under the hood, get some crappy extension cord that I found <clears throat> and uh and go at it unfortunately Battery powered sawzall is too damn good to be true. You! <laughs> For whatever reason, I just gave her you. I don't know why. It was a nice while it lasted. Oh, then you always find this is more proof of work to the sweat of your brow. And lazy or hardworking, you find well, something. Of course, I roll up on this. And I didn't do my Tetris. Of course, I did manage to get it in. So, oh, I pulled the key out. Yeah, that makes me mad about that. Oh, it almost didn't start. Next thing to break. Yeah. I've got a lot to say about it. I just consume half my brain power trying to explain the same crap over and over and over and over again. Like as if people are doing that to, I don't know, so that I hear myself talk and figure it out for myself. No. That ain't gonna happen. I already figured it out. That you work with stuff that's broken and you learn to make the broken stuff work. And that's everything from family relationship to the clothes I wear to the cars I drive to the house I live in because you could spend your life trying to make it perfect and trying to keep it perfect for for somebody like me it would just be mentally exhausting more so than uh, the heck with it just sit back and relax and enjoy the videos. There you go.